incredible amount of managers at, uh, at their, in, they had a couple of caretaker managers. Then uh, an old guy named Bill Moore, who used to be yes. from Sunderland. Yes. Uh, he had a lovely guy. He used to, when you get, get, get flustered in the team meeting, he used to go cross eyed and his teeth, all his teeth used to fall down. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's incredible. <laughs> uh, you know, we, 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 you got to try and be serious because he was a, another one of the old, real strict old school. Yes. Then we had a, oh, t I've nearly forgot this one, Dick Graham. Oh, Dick. Dick Used Graham, to Colchester, 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 Colchester Palace. Yes, yeah. yeah well, he old came, goalkeeper. He came down and he was like the 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 PTI. Um, mm. You know, your sergeant major. Oh God, he, he nearly mm. killed me because he took it was right shine to me being a goalkeeper. He said, right, I'm going to coach you and train you. And he nearly killed me. God, mm. He was incredible. But you only so, played something like fifty odd games, didn't you? And then, and then the London interest. That's right. Out. Yes. I mean, I've, I've got a lovely story about that because it, we'd gone on holiday with uh, my wife. She was my fiance then, and uh, we'd gone down to Weymouth, and um, we had a, a telegram pushed under the door um, this one morning, and uh, opened it up and ring Ernie Wilson at, at uh, Walsall. It was the secretary. Uh, immediately, I thought, oh, what's happened now, sort of thing. So, run down the phone box and no mobile phones in those no, no, no. days. <laughs> or, or in the hotel room. Or rooms. in the hotel <laughs> rooms, nothing. So, straight down um, the phone box, rang him, and uh, he said, oh, You've got to get Parks. He said, I mean, that was the mm. Parks, mm. you've got to get back straight away. They said, uh, We've agreed a transfer fee for you with Queen's Park Rangers, and they, they want to see you. And uh, I thought, I sort of think of me, sort of took me back a little bit. And I said, "No," I said, "I'm on holiday." You realise I'm on holiday? I said, "I'm not going to come back." Uh, and you know, I said, "Oh," and, and the second thing, I'm not going to go to Scotland for anybody. Oh, <laughs> really? This is the Queen's gospel truth. That's that the Queen's gospel Park. truth. And then he went, "Queen's Park Rangers are in the second division. They're in Lon the London side." You know, yeah. I mean, if the ground could have opened up, yeah, I'm yeah. glad I was on the end of the focus. Yeah. I went sort of red and embarrassed. And I yeah. thought, showed you how much I followed football then. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. So you went to QPR. Yes. And, and who are the players you remember most in that very successful QPR side? Oh, the, the whole side actually were stars. Really. You had um, a player like Mickey Leach, who was the, the unsung hero. He would always be the scapegoat. The crowd would be on his back. But he actually um, used to come in at all different positions. He'd play up front, midfield, he'd play in defence. And he, he, he would fill in wherever uh, and always perform and give 100%. Uh, then you obviously had the, you, you had the Stan Bowles of the magician. I mean, um, I'd hate to think what he'd be worth now. And he was a magician, wasn't he? He, oh, he was fabulous. I mean, he, he, he just had this natural gift of... He, 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 was, he was never one to try and shield a ball. He just used to run with the ball out and he's in front of him and, and defenders would think, I've got you now. And all of a sudden, it, you know, he'd just do something and he was past them. And they'd look and think, well, where's he gone? You know, he's an incredible guy. Yeah. Jerry Francis, um, possibly nearly one of the greatest all-round players because he, he really could tackle, get back. I mean, in every side you have a, a ball-winning midfield player and then you, you get normally get that to pass it on to, to some, somebody else like Trevor Brookin. Like in, in West Ham's area, it was Jeff Pye could pass it on to Trevor Brookin. But Jerry, he could do the lot. He used to win the tackles, get the ball, look up not, and score great goals as yes. well. I mean, he scored a lot of goals yes. for a midfield player. Are there any games you particularly recall, Phil, where the side played particularly well? Um, I, I certainly remember, because there was always a big feud between Malcolm McDonald and Stan Bowles, I think, I can never remember this. But oh, there was really? All, yeah, I think there was, there was always a little, little twos and fro's in the paper, um, little quotes from one another against the, you know, each, each other. And um, we played up at Newcastle and in that run, and uh, we were losing 1-0 with probably about 20 minutes to go, I think. And uh, then we managed to sneak one back. And uh, and then with the, virtually the last kick of the game, Stan scored the winner. And Malcolm, there was always a great photo of Malcolm sort of standing on the halfway line with his head bowed like that. And, and Stan is jumping up and down in front of mm. him, you know. And he, he, Malcolm couldn't lift his eyes up to see, to look at Stan, because he was just yeah. like, you know, having a real go at him. So the time comes then for you to move on. You've played something like 344 league games for QPR. Yeah. And then you go to, to West Ham. Yeah. I'm for a record, world record fee for a goalkeeper, then £565,000. And in fact, you move into a good side fairly quickly at Upton Park. They were a very good side, but there were various weaknesses. And, and John said to me, he said, look, he said, 
I just want you to come out and do exactly what you've been doing in QPR, come out, get the crosses, cut, you know, just dominate. He said, we haven't really, although Mervyn was a great goalkeeper, Mervyn That's Day. That's Mervyn Day. Mervyn Day. And I think Bobby Ferguson. Bobby Fer Fergie yeah. was still there. They yeah. were both still there at the yeah. time. And uh, he said, I'm looking to make a lot of changes. Uh, he says, but we've got a little bit of ill-discipline, so you know, I'm hoping you coming in will, will help it. And the f my first game, my debut, was against Oldham uh, at Upton Park, 30,000 there. Um, fabulous atmosphere, great reception I got, absolutely mm. fabulous reception. Mm. And we were playing through the game and John McDowell was right back. Um, we had Frank Lampard left back. Now Frank would turn up on the right wing, <laughs> John McDowell would turn up on the left wing at the same time. <laughs> you know, this was the thing and I'm thinking, oh God, what have I done? I've come, I've come from one defence yeah. who can't defend. Well, we, were, we were struggling, we were, we were having a bad time to a side who loves to attack and, and they were all going forward. And it was just like poor old Billy Bonds and we at the back. <laughs> Yes. And, and if you, you know, in today's football, if you were playing yes. against a, a side of counter-attack yes. you'd be dead. Yes. But we just seemed to get away with it for a while. And, and, and then John came in and got rid of the players he wanted. Tommy Taylor, John McDowell went, um, Alan Taylor, Billy Jennings. He got rid of all these. Mervyn, he sold them to, uh, to Aston Villa. And so he, he got rid of the, the people of, yes. uh, as, as he wanted them. Yes. And, uh, and replaced them and built up that very, very good side. Yes. A, a good side that actually then... I mean, you were in the second division, weren't you? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes yeah. yeah you, you weren't in the, in the top No, that's division. right. I mean, this was another thing that a lot of people couldn't understand, that I'd moved from QPR, who were in the, in the um, bottom half, or you would say yeah. the bottom three of the first division, yes. the old first division then, into the second division, yes. to a side in the, in the top four. So really, I, I looked at it as, as more of a progression than, yes. than anything else, and that's what it proved out yeah. to be. But as a second division side, you still got to Wembley. Uh, in did. 1980 against Arsenal. We actually got to Wembley three times uh, well, because obviously the, the, uh, we, we won the cup so we went back to the Charity Shield Yes. and we also played in the League Cup final the following year so we played, played as a second division side uh, at Wembley three times in yes. ten months yes. which I think was a, again a record. But in that cup run Phil, I remember the cup final very well with uh, West Ham's 1-0 victory but were there any dramas along the way? Um, I think the biggest drama was that it was the first game in the third round at West Brom away. Big Ron was the manager. Um, Brian Robson was, was then at West Brom. Um, we had, um, I can't think who else was playing, Gary Owen was there. Oh, Brian, I'm not sure if Brian Robson was still there, but, but Gary Owen was playing, um, Dean. Yeah. Um, I can't remember who was in goal now. But, but Would that have been the Cyril Regis and, and Cyril, Laurie Cyril, Cunningham? Cyril, <coughs> Cyril was playing. Laurie Cunningham had gone, I think, to, to um, Spain then. Yeah. But Cyril was playing, certainly the centre forward. And uh, it was one of those things. They, West Brom, again, were in the first division. We were in the second division. And it was going to be end of story. 